Well, good evening, everyone, and um, yeah, 29th of October. Thanks very much for joining us this evening, Friday night. Obviously, normally Wednesday, um, I went to Egypt for half term or for early half term. So, thanks very much for coming on tonight. We're just going to have a little, I've had a number of questions. We're going to just, I think, just talk around a number of subjects, mainly obviously around crypto. It's what everybody is, is it's where, to be honest, where you should be focusing at the minute. Again, don't, don't be all in. Some people are dead at all, but I, I should really say that just to uh, to protect my own back because, like everything, you know, it's not financial advice. It's purely for education purposes. Everything I say is just my view. I'm going to talk uh, a little bit tonight about crypto, metaverse. Um, I'm sure some of you saw what Facebook have done. I'm just going to show a little clip of that tonight. We're going to talk about DAOs bit about MetaMask seems to be getting a lot of questions. I'm getting a lot of questions about MetaMask. Um, I just want to kind of wrap those up and exits because I, I would I would say you all need to start considering exit plans. And there's a little bit I'm going to talk about in a second about overwhelm, which I feel is is really, really important when we're looking at exits. But Meta, did everybody see Meta? Facebook? Um, Elon Musk came on screen yesterday um, and openly, you know, came out about Metaverse. Um, oh, they're, they're renaming of Metaverse. I'm just looking for a clip I was going to show you. Typically, I can't find it. I'll just find it in a second. But basically, I think it's quite a powerful thing. No matter what you think about it, or, or what is the metaverse, I suppose, it, you know, whatever you think about it, it's, it's a big move for them to do that, for uh, Mark Zuckerberg to come out. They're still going to have all of the apps with their same name, so you'll still have Facebook, you'll still have Instagram. Uh, but it's, it, what he's doing is effectively he's putting that umbrella, he's putting an umbrella above it, and it's the largest amalgamation of, um, of communities effectively ever you know that we've ever ever seen and it's all about moving into the metaverse and i'm sure if you you know you know my love for for good old raul pal you know he's talked about the metaverse a lot and they're currently building a metaverse of the real vision offices that you'll you'll know that it's a term that gets banded around but what is the metaverse you know and, and a lot i think a lot of people get confused with the metaverse it's not one place and it's not going to be like playing the game but it's uh, or kind of one experienced. It's it's what the term in digital fluidity. It's a blend of physical and digital worlds. That's that's the vision behind what the metaverse is, and it's going to be you know it's a, as diverse and as unique as you want. And DAOs play a part in that, and that, hence why we'll talk about DAOs in a second. It's not going to be one kind of you know one kind of interactive computer game. I'm certainly no gamer at all, so it's not going to be kind of a computer game and experience. Um, but it will be kind of an interoperable world where you might not trust it initially of where it's going at the minute because obviously it's new technology, but it's advancing so, so fast. You might not trust it, but it is a, a digital society that treats or is planned to treat everybody the way that they want to be treated. And again, that comes back to the DAOs. Some of the societies that get created, and that's the, the key to it, there will be societies created. I personally don't think it will be good for society as a whole, but I, you've just got to you've just got to suck it up because it's happening. Because societies are going to be created, and you will have items within that physical items. I'll talk about that in a second. That you can buy. There'll be rents to be in societies. So, say I want to go to the metaverse that is held by. I don't know, becomes metaverse under the Facebook things. I could pay a rent to do that. The metaverse of real vision, I might pay a rent to do that. And it's no longer going to be like just watching a 2D computer screen. You are going to be immersed in it. There will be digital sovereign states as part of the metaverse. So this is the metaverse's big picture. It's worth going to research what, what the big picture behind the metaverse is. And obviously that will grow in time as well. There will be sovereign states that they're claiming within that. 
uh, but without the restrictions that we currently see within our own physical states. DAOs um, will create opportunities uh, for governance within that. Oh. DAOs will, why is Cain just rang me? Stand by. Um, DAOs will create opportunities for governance within that and interoperability. Physical goods uh, and the part uh, and, and kind of physical goods in the digital society will be in there with cryptocurrencies, okay, being the, the purchase NFTs, non fungible tokens, etc., and then social tokens as well. And it'll all be run on the blockchain, which means it can never be changed. Um, what Facebook's done with Metaverse and their DM which they're now going to be called, you know, is their currency. It's, it'll be an experience to onboard billions of people. Okay. And that's kind of, I, th I look at it and I'm like, it's quite a scary thought of, of where we're going. Certainly I look at my children with the way they already look at, well, only the, they haven't got phones if I'm honest, but you look at kids now and you look at what they're doing and it's quite, I feel it's quite a scary thought. Um, um, personally but as i say you've just got to suck it up because it is where it is where the world is going um it is adoption and that's what we're doing it is rapid rapid adoption and we're going to see it certainly over the next few years might not be what you want but it is what it is uh, and we've got to we've got we've got to have that choice to participate in it or not i may not participate in it but i'll certainly see the opportunities to capitalize on the investment and that's kind of how i'll look at it with regards to investment within the metaverse is investment within the games okay because a lot of this will be gaming that's in there so that's what i'll do will i get involved in the metaverse i don't think so it's not really my scene i've never been a computer game player i've never been that that vr type person um even when i was flying a lot you know the simulator stuff that that i was never good in the simulator but i was you know very good at physically flying i i, I, I put more in the physical the physical realm than I do in the, the VR realm, but you've got to suck it up and it is what it is. But none of us can exist, none of us inside of that will be able to exist without crypto, blockchain, and the NFTs that go with it, because that's what is going to be required. Crypto will have the value within it. They'll that's the, the building blocks of that society. NFTs, okay. What we see now is NFTs of pictures, paintings jpegs which are now going for freaking millions and i'm going to talk about a little nft at the end actually one which is actually done quite well and i think it's got more legs if any of you want to get into the nft space the nfts the non-fungible tokens will become the the ownership of the items if you don't understand the power of the nfts really of nfts it goes beyond the jpegs the pictures that you see now it goes into that being able to tokenize and have ownership of any physical object that you may have now can then be created in NFT form to form true ownership of something. And then you'll have the social tokens within as well. So all of what I've spoken about really is what's classed as the bigger picture of what the vision for the metaverse, okay? Do I see opportunities in it at the moment? I do certainly in some of the, the, the gaming elements, you know, you've got Decentraland, which is one of the major ones, which is, is looking into the metaverse now. Sandbox, which is something that I've been in since it was about 0.001 of a, pe uh, of a penny, is one of the leading games uh, platforms in there at the moment. I wouldn't be investing in that now um, if I was you. So even though I've said Sandbox, please don't go and invest it now. That, that ship has sailed. And I think Sandbox in itself will see a large crash because a lot of that, like Ethereum, is locked up. And again, when it's when that unlock phase happens, I think you'll see a lot coming out. And then potentially it is a time to buy into Sandbox past that. But it's not one that I would talk about as a, as a recommendation. But it's going to be it's going to have its own GDP as well as what the, 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 the what what the vision is. So the it'll have a layer of its gross domestic product. It will produce things, and it'll have endless possibilities. Uh, there won't be one metaverse and there'll be a lot of communities, okay? So there'll be multiple, multiple communities. And that's kind of why you see DAOs flat coming up now. Obviously, we, we mentioned Olympus DAO last time. And I'm going to talk a little bit about DAOs because 
I think just a little bit of understanding about what a DAO is. A lot of it I didn't know how it all started with one called Flamingo DAO, which we'll talk about in a second. I think, you know, for me, looking at the history of that allows you to see potentially where the next one is. Olympus DAO, I've now been in and I'm, I'm kind of running kind of, a, shall we call it in inverted commas, an experiment with it. I don't 100% trust it for a number of reasons. Um, good friend of mine, Siam, is pretty much all in it, okay? But I see potentially a, another angle. I've seen too many rug pulls, let's say that, um, throughout since I've been in crypto since 2017. Uh, and I don't think Olympus is going to be rug pulled yet, but it has a distinct possibility that it could. And anything that could have it, I kind of err on the side of caution, like anything you've got to err on the side of caution. The fact that the the there is an, a, a potential that an individual could or a group of individuals could manipulate the price to the point where it appeared to be a rug pull. My own personal opinion, opinion always look in the, bear, the bullish in the bear market. But Meta from Facebook is a powerful, powerful thing, guys. Don't turn your back on it. Really go and have a little look into the Metaverse because it's something, certainly when it comes to the bear market of crypto, which I'm still in the firm belief that we will see a bear market, no matter how many people say this time is different because the institutions are on board. Until the time that I don't see the bear market, I will prepare for the bear market, okay? We may not see it. We may see as... As Willy Woo says, the drunken um, march upwards, where it's just going to be this very jagged marching upwards. Um, but then there's there's the other option is I, I do see us I do see the kind of the fifty ish thousand Bitcoin being the base of the next bull market. And we'll pull some charts up in a moment. So metaverse, just wanted to throw that one out there because I think Mark Zuckerberg has thrown that one out there now to the world, and it'll be a very very now rapid. Uh, adoption of the metaverse where previously i think without him doing that it would have been kind of a slow grind i think now it'll be a very very rapid adoption they are advancing that technology at an exponential rate right on top of overwhelm what why i've, I've i put title overwhelm it's not really about overwhelm this is more about exits if i'm honest all these points that i'm going to talk about now but it's about the mentality uh, and it, it's about that mindset and getting yourself in the right place because and again some of it you'll think um, I sound like a broken record, but it is very, very important, certainly with some of the pumps that we're now seeing. Because online, you can go online, you can look anywhere where we're coming into a time now where every single person on every single social media platform will become an expert in crypto. Okay. It's what happens. It's what I've seen before. You'll get somebody who invested in Shiba Inu and thinks they're a freaking daddy. Don't get me wrong. I, I applaud those who did. Okay. You've done well. 90% of people will still lose their money. How many people? Are, there was a thing on Twitter earlier on about the amount of billions, okay, sat on wallets from individuals who invested in Shiba Inu who now haven't got enough Ethereum to get it off. Okay, so they haven't got ETH in their wallet to, for the gas to get the Shiba off because they don't understand crypto enough to even know that. And it's kind of that lack of it. And it's, you know, I say I applaud people. I massively applaud that bloke who put it. I'm sure you've all seen it, the $8,000 in a wallet last August now worth 10.2 billion hasn't been touched, hasn't moved, and that money is still sat there. Chances are that individual has probably lost their keys, um, which is what normally happens. They'll have just thrown a little bit of money into a punt and they've probably lost their keys and they've probably got no concept of, of, of it being there or they've just lost their keys. Very much like the hard drive with the uh, thousands of Bitcoin, which was lost on a tip in Wales. I'm sure, again, you've all seen that. But we could all look online and we'll see people throwing around trades of millions okay go on any youtube channel um you know some of their analysis is very good and, and they're they're million dollar trades okay and they're throwing them around like it's like it's nothing and it's it's important to not just then look at your portfolio and think oh my gain of 200 pound, 300 pound, five grand now seems so insignificant. I might as well just leave this to run, okay, um, to see where we get to, because that is one of the biggest mistakes that people make. And it's one of the biggest mistakes that people made roll back a few years to where 90% of people left the last crypto cycle with nothing.
because it's about taking profit okay and it's like how do you take profit in this illusionary world that we see where everybody becomes the expert everybody on social media is is talking about how they've made millions and things like that and youtube you'll go to youtube to try and do research on cryptocurrencies and all of a sudden you're throwing these you know videos of people who are seemingly trading you know six figures into seven figures they don't show the ones where they got liquidated okay like all of the ethereum positions yesterday that were liquidated all of the bitcoin positions yesterday that were liquidated with that spike down to fifty thousand. they don't go and show that so how do you take profits and there isn't really a secret to it okay it is massively hard to take profits okay um and again like i say it might sound like a broken record but it is it's important to look at it at, at your portfolio and take profits at the appropriate time it is very very difficult now don't always think i'm going to take profits and buy back lower okay because that is you know that's been proven with statistics that actually time in the market is better than timing the market okay so don't get into your head thinking i'm going to sell now and then buy back when it drops by 10 percent 15 percent you may get it right half a dozen times but then you will lose and you'll start losing big unless you are actually a trader that is a very foolish kind of mindset to start getting into by all means take profits put it into stable coins and have that as dry powder if a large trace a retrace comes back down but get yourself out of the mindset of thinking i'm going to uh, take side steps unless you're an experienced trader to start doing side steps from from cryptos on a spike it's hard to get right and i say you might get it right half a dozen times but then you will probably get it wrong half a you know a lot more and you'll lose a lot more if you've got conviction in that and it hasn't reached your target yet whatever that is then just stick with it okay so it's kind of like is there a secret to taking profits and i get asked this all the time okay when should i take profits and there isn't a black and white answer to that because there isn't there isn't kind of a secret to taking profits it is all about your goals and i think this is the bit i want to kind of re-emphasize because you've got to understand why you got into crypto why did you even start in this space okay and again it's because I don't want people to relay it back thinking, well, oh, I've only made five grand in, in, in crypto. It's not really life changing money. Um, so I might as well just leave it to run. But the point being, if you've got five grand, but you started with a hundred pounds, you've done exceptionally well. And what you want to be doing is looking at the lessons that have been learned along that way. Don't think, oh, I've only got five grand. It's not a million pounds. Therefore, I don't need to take profit or I don't, I'll just leave this to run. That's the wrong mentality. Okay. You must still take profits in the percentage way. And I'll talk about my exit, which is my personal uh, route to exit um, uh, as we move on. But there's so many, so many different do, do, different ways. If you're here for life changing money, then you've got to, you know, you've got to look at what you put in to start with. If it's to supplement your income, pay off loans, you know, buy things, this, that, and the other. So one of my initial goals with crypto was to generate enough money to then make a number of other investments so with my initial profits that i made in crypto i made one property purchase i well i actually made two but i've literally this week just backed out of a backed out of one big development which was mine personally not the gateway and i made two investments buying large uh, share positions in companies one being a watch company one being an eco heating company and they were goals that i set okay from crypto portfolio had that those gains not come from the crypto portfolio i wouldn't have invested in them so it's kind of allocating that that goal to the crypto portfolio okay if it's life-changing money what is life-changing money to you what what figure is that is it fifty thousand? is it a hundred thousand is it five hundred thousand you've got to start putting a, a figure on that because if all of a sudden your goal is 500,000 and then all of a sudden you see a portfolio rattling through 600, 700,000 and you haven't taken profits, okay, then you need to think twice. You need to reevaluate where you are because you need to know why you are kind of here and determine how and when to take those profits. When I first got into crypto, it was simply to get rich quick. That was it. I saw everybody else doing it, formed into it, was into it for quite a long time. 
I bought a lot of coins, which I didn't fully understand. Okay, one of the reasons I hate XRP now, even though I went into it in the trade and I've now sold out of XRP, I went into XRP roll back to 2017 because it was the hype coin of the day. That and another one, Tron, okay, were the hype coins of the day. They did do well, the boost, the, the, the pumped, okay, but because they pumped, and I think I'd made like, you know, on, on, on Tron, I think at the time, I think it was up to, I don't know, about 20,000. I thought, ah, it's not, not, it's not enough cash. Therefore, I didn't sell. It subsequently crashed into virtually nothing. So I lost all of that position simply because I hadn't actually set out a reason to stay in it. Reaffirm your goals for the cycle and plan that exit. Just think about the exit. Think about it, plan it, write it down. I have 100% conviction that ETH will go to $10,000 this cycle. Will I still hold all of my ETH, okay, up to 10,000? Not a chance will I, not a chance. You know, I have well into three figures of Ethereum. And if I just thought, right, at 10,000, I'm going to sell it all. So it's a, it's a, it's a basically, it's a binary exit. And a binary exit is, some people have binary exits, i.e. it's an out or you're in, you're fully in or you're fully out. I'm not going to say it's good, bad, or indifferent. It's for you to decide how you want to exit. But if it's a binary exit, your binary is to exit at 10,000 and we get to 9,000 and then start the, the tumble back downhill, at what point do you then sell? Okay, if the on-chain analysis is saying that actually we are, that's probably it peaked. You know, roll back to May, okay, when we saw that big drop, I didn't sell because I was comfortable that we hadn't reached the peak don't get me wrong might be wrong i look at four metrics when it comes to looking at the top and it didn't tell me in may that it was at the top but let's say we get to nine thousand, and the metrics are screaming we are now at the top of this market i haven't hit my target so therefore do i now sell do i sell on the way down or should i have had a stage out strategy on the way you know so by the time you know 10 percent here 10 percent there Actually, when it gets to 10,000, I might only have 50% of my original bag, yeah? But it's a planned exit because you've got to be honest with yourself. It's not going to be a straight road to 10,000. I do actually think we'll probably see 10 grand quite far quicker than Bitcoin to 10K, uh, to 100. I've got a funny feeling, but you've got to be realist. This is one of the biggest things, and this is what we're going to start seeing now. This is why everybody who's got bloody money in Shiba Inu will probably lose it because they, they, they've, we've got into this mentality of an only up market, and you can't. And, and people struggle to shake that bias. We've actually been in an only up market now, bar that, you know, let's call it since March 2020. But actually, before that, every market has has risen for you know the previous 15 years, but. The psychology of individuals now, and it's very easy for your psychology to become skewed as well, yeah, um, because we've got an only up market. We get fearful of the 10% drops. Good friend of mine who's not long in crypto, um, not part of this group, you know, a, a military fella, not long in crypto, put quite a significant sum into it. Sits, messages me, you know, fantastic, we've just gone up 15%, gone up 20% when he first got in, you know, he was seeing those as daily gains. And then literally when it'll drop 6%, you know, it'll drop 6, 7, 8, 9, 10%, his portfolio value, he's, he's panicking because he's got this mindset that it should only be going up and he can't handle the, the psychology of those downs. And a lot of it coming now will be herd mentality, group thinking, and we'll follow others, okay? We'll spend our time looking on YouTube when things start popping. We'll spend our time on Twitter, looking what others are saying, okay? What the person down the streets uh, saying will, and you know, what, what, what's being said here and there. And why do we do that? Because it's far easier to both share misery, okay? And follow the winds. And what I mean by that is, all of a sudden when that market is crashing, okay? And you are in that market, okay? And, and but everybody's talking about, it crashing here there and everywhere but everyone's talking about it we feel comfortable we feel safer that we're not the only one losing money that day 
And then when it's rocketing up and everybody's saying, wow, we're on the rocket ship to the moon, we can only go up and we'll never see below $60,000 again and we'll next stop is 100. It's easy to get on board with that, you know, putting the laser eyes on you to, uh, on on Twitter started again. All of a sudden, everybody's getting them again. If you laser eyes on, on your, your photo on Twitter, is the thing to say, let's get to 100,000 Bitcoin. That's what it's all about. But all of a sudden, that, that momentum of euphoria is starting to come into the market again. And the herd is starting to move and it's only screaming up, up, up. And that's kind of it's starting to put me on edge at the moment. Because what are you going to do? People will buy more and they'll buy more on the herd mentality view rather than the educated plan view. There's nothing wrong with buying more as it's going up, okay, adding to positions, etc. But don't do it for the wrong reasons, guys. And all of this, all I'm talking about now is just kind of, I just don't want to see people in this group left holding a bag that they didn't want to be holding for the next four years. If you're happy holding that bag for the next four years, then dig out and do it. OK, but don't lie to yourself if you're not comfortable with it, because a lot of people, when it starts to drop, will be like, oh, yeah, I'm comfortable inside, though, they're broken because they've just seen their portfolio go from 100,000 to 50,000. Back in May, OK, I saw 450,000 pounds taken off my portfolio, but I wasn't. I wasn't worried about it because, again, I was I was comfortable with the metrics that I hadn't yet seen to signify the top. Why do people sell though? Okay, again, group thinking, you get sucked into that herd uh, and, and, you know, all of a sudden we're dropping, you know, all of a sudden you, somebody sells, you start getting into that. You let your emotions replace logic rather than holding it for the correct reasons. In that momentum, you feel like you're making the right decision. But in fact, in the long term, you're far making the wrong decision because it is back to that herd mentality. Plan it, focus on it and execute that plan. There's nothing wrong with changing the plan as long as it's done with actual conviction and data to back up why you are changing it. Yeah, panic selling comes from that that part, that same part of the brain. It's that pleasure and pain, you know, that panic selling that people do. Um, and and I, I get it now, guys, you know, I absolutely get it. I look at some of the coins I've got now, actually some of them have taken quite a big hit today. Others have taken quite a significant rally. I've got some in my portfolio which have taken a bit, a bit of a hit and thought to myself, do you know what? I'm just going to sell them up, add to the positions that are rallying. And I thought, no, don't, because I bought them for a reason. And they've dipped. They've dipped today because it's the dip that the ones which are rallying today saw two weeks ago. It's that, again, don't forget the flow of money in crypto from the from the, the Bitcoin to the Ethereum to the large caps to the medium caps to the micro caps, okay, and then back up to the top. Don't forget that flow. So the micro caps now, some of them may still be bleeding. As it happens, the micro caps are pumping again, and it just gives a little bit on edge. I'm a little bit on edge at the minute about this cycle, um, if I'm honest. And, and, you know, where I'd start putting it is I'd start putting us actually at about a 70, grand, 70 to $80,000 top is what I spoke about the other day. Uh, to, to a good friend of mine. Uh, Bitcoin dips below 30. Yeah, everyone, you know, that, that heard, everyone was screaming, sell, sell, sell. You know, it's going to zero and very, very few people bought. Okay, but then when it was on its way back up, you know, it took it, it, took it to get it almost to 50,000 before people started to buy it. Once you start hearing it from everybody under the sun, actually, is that a, uh, a worrying time? Look for capitulation. Okay, that's a rounded bottom in a chart and we'll talk about that in a very moment of time because that means there's no more sellers in the market and look to scale out scaling out is my preferred strategy i think i put it on the facebook group uh my plan because scaling out does allow you to be greedy make the plan write it down but don't try and pick that top scaling out my plan for scaling out some of them were getting close now ethereum broke its all-time high earlier on today i plan to exit a portion of the position at 10 percent above an all-time high and then 10%, 10 of the portfolio every time it, it, it makes other milestones along the way. So I've got a significant plan. Now at 50% of Ethereum, okay, exited, I will then hold my 50% for the longer term, i.e. potentially to see that 10 grand. There are other coins. So my exit is coin specific rather than portfolio specific. It's 
portfolio specific on the first barrier, IEI will be exiting 10% at 10% above all time high. Other coins, I will be fully out of, but unlike Ethereum, like I've just said, at 50%, I plan to hold that certainly for the five figures and then I'll, I'll have another exit plan from there. But what I'm getting at is just think about it. Think what you want to do. Think what you want to achieve. If, and again, I'm in another group and their mentality is huddle 2025, okay? Dig out, huddle till 2025. Don't look at your portfolio. Leave it till 2025. There's a lot to be said about that. They have a a mentality and a, and a mental resilience that allows them just to say, fuck it, I'm going to sit and I'm not going to look at this till 2025. Could they make more money along the way? Quite probably. But actually, they'll probably in the long run probably end up making more because they've got no emotion to it. They've invested. They're DCAing into simply the blue chips and they're not going to touch it till 2025. It's a powerful, powerful way of investing. Make a plan. Think about your plan now because very soon, okay, and at, very soon, everybody will become an expert on crypto. Everywhere you look will be bullish. Always look for that bear market, bear market as well. Right, DAOs. What's a DAO? DAOs are decent. Oh, I didn't put a, a thing on here. You've got all of the things there now. Right, DAO, the reason I want to talk about DAOs is because, you know, some of them were brought to my attention. You know, Howard, I think, brought to, brought one to a brought the Olympus down to my attention. It's things that I wasn't really looking for, if I'm honest. Um, as I said, Good friend of mine, Siam, he is now pretty much all in his portfolio on a number of income producing DAOs. Why has he done that? He's, he, that's his strategy. Okay. His strategy is produce income from the DAOs, feed that back into his business, which will then ultimately grow the business, which will then be able to feed the, the, the DAO a little bit more. So this, this, this perpetual circle. Now, I certainly personally have more confidence in the, the mainstream cryptos or the blue chips at the moment. I've still, I've, I've got positions in, in the DAOs, which I'm going to talk about in a second, but percentage wise, I've allocated accordingly because there is that ability for volatility. The idea behind the DAOs in question, so like Olympus DAO, Climber, Monster, Time is stability. Um, but they'll be volatile until they get there. So a DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization. That's what it stands for. And it was started as an autonomous way to put code onto the blockchain that would make money for itself, okay? That was kind of one of the first things. Um, I think I've got it later on, Uber. So Uber at the moment, I read a good article about Uber today. They're considering building a, an Uber DAO, okay? And the idea behind the Uber DAO is it will have the self-driving electric cars from kind of your Teslas and people, which obviously don't yet exist, which are all owned, they'll be charged autonomously, everything will be autonomous. So it's kind of a self-running organization. That's ultimately one of the visions of a DAO. Um, and it would, they would make money for themselves. It's a self-funding business in essence. They're organizations and communities of like-minded people. So now you can see the link between the DAO and the metaverse. And their function is they've got no hierarchy. It's a company structure of the future is what they, what they call a DAO. And as I say, uh, uh, Uber are considering it. Flamingo DAO was one of the first, and it was it was there to buy NFTs. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the slide, then we'll go on to some web pages because it saves me jumping around. And I'll show you Flamingo DAO. But in essence, Flamingo DAO, you can't invest in now. It's not something to invest in, but that was one of the first. And I, and I, I look at it very much like a almost like a collective investment scheme. So what people did is they invested into Flamingo DAO and Flamingo DAO would then buy um, NFTs. And the NFTs, so NFTs would then be held by the DAO and collectively owned by everybody who was invested in that DAO. So you look at it in that sense, it's kind of not a self-running company. It's a community, though, of people who've decided what they want to buy to be held within that community, the Flamingo Down. Well, you've got other ones like the Uber Vision, where it'll be a self-funding business. Very, very powerful thing. But with that, they allow some very large APYs to build liquidity. 
So like Olympus Dow, for instance, 18,000% APY. You've got um, monsters over a million percent APY. So you look at that and you're like, right, well, where is that money coming from? And it's not money that's coming from anywhere. So think about it as you want the money side of it not important. So let's forget the money, that million odd, or let's call uh, Olympus, uh, 18,000% APY is that currently is. So it's annual percentage yield, not APR, which is annual percentage return. APR is linear, APY is exponential. So APY is, if you think about APY, is, it's simply that every time you get paid your interest payment, you are um, compounding it. So it's not being paid separate, it's being paid into the pot, which then next interest payment is, is your initial capital plus that interest payment. That interest payment's paid, so the next interest payment is your capital plus the interest payment plus the interest payment. Exponential growth. That's APY versus APR. APR would be 12% per year, so you put in 100 grand, you get 112,000 back. That's 12% APR, not APY. So Olympus 18,000. So let's not look at the monetary side. This is where I think a lot of people get um, a bit confused about, like, where's that money coming from? Well, it's it's not as money as such you are gaining tokens so 50 tokens for instance you will get in that 18 percent apy is, is around six percent per week so you're not getting money but if you hold 50 tokens what you're getting is six percent more tokens okay so you're 50 then all of a sudden becomes 53 the financial side is simply supply and demand what people are willing to pay for that item so i've gained three tokens that's all that's all you should be looking at you've gained three tokens the next time you'll gain a few more tokens you'll gain a few more tokens the open market value is what somebody else is prepared to pay for that item rather than the dow itself having the money that you are increasing in value and that's kind of it because it's things like if you are investing in a company, the company you are looking at the company valuation, it's got that money and that's what values it. This is simply what somebody else is prepared to pay for it, to build that community and build that organization in the DAO. They are massively powerful things and they will form part of the future. Right now, they're relatively, they're risky -er invest investments, okay, because they're not, they are community-led. There's no hierarchy. Their communities are generally all on Discord. Okay, so you can go and become part of the, the Olympus Discord community and also the Olympus. And you can look at kind of the, 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 the people who are involved in it. And they've all got titles as such as if it is almost a brand, brand business. And I'd say people have done a lot more analysis on it than I. When I do analysis on things like this, I do it a slightly different way. I would look at, I take a lot somebody else has done the positive analysis on it hence what they've invested in i will always go at something and look at the negatives i want to find the thing that's going to go wrong with this that's going to see me off okay that's going to that's going to be the rug pull that's going to see the downside in the future these will be fantastic i am invested in them now um they are really really powerful things to exponentially increase your money my strategy for them will be i will probably be once we're in the bear market okay so i will exit to stable with the exit plan that i've spoken about once we've seen that crash that absolute that 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 drop that inevitably we will see where you'll see the micro caps get smashed okay and a lot of these dows are micros so actually you'll see the price go from 800 pounds i think is is a, is an ohm an olympus dow at the moment an ohm coin down to say i don't know 200 300 uh pounds for instance because it will naturally get smashed i'll then allow for a level of stability my plan then will probably be to look for the DAOs at that point to put my stable currency into. So actually, I'm going to use the DAOs to almost to ride the bear market at a bit more. Again, not all of that, not all of the stable coin, but potentially a little bit more than I once would have. OK, and again, it's a movable feast, isn't it? So that's one of the strategies I'm now looking at. So instead of getting 12 percent on my stable USDC coins, I might allocate, I don't know, 30 percent of my dry powder and USDC to a DAO to get, you know, an exponential growth return on that.
uh, in the period of time because we've found that stability in the bear market. But I'll show you a few downs in a second. Once I come on the web, I'm going to show you a few web pages. So they're an interesting concept. Uh, what else have we got going on? I've only got a couple more slides and we'll, I want to show you some web pages. Uh, my good old friend, good old Raul, uh, interesting tweet this morning. Um, yeah, you know, that, that that's quite interesting. So he is going, um, he's obviously always been long on Ethereum. 76%, I think it is, of his portfolio is in Ethereum. 3% is in Bitcoin. Uh, no, 72%. Ethereum, 3% Bitcoin, 25% other alts. Um, um, other alts, and like you can see there down the bottom, he talks about Sandbox, Chili's interesting one, Decentraland. Again, a lot of that is based on the fact um, of what, what Elon's now doing. But the key I took from this is he's generally not one to use leverage, and he always talks about not using leverage. And like he says here, He's now leveraged his positions. Now, he's not leveraged it through 10x, 20x, 100x on your Binance channels and things like that. He's, he's basically leveraged his position uh, through call options, which is options trading rather than just, shall we call it, spread betting. Okay. So that is a far more advanced uh, investment. But the point being, he's now gone into a leveraged position on his Ethereum. So that, you know, that's him showing confidence. And what I quite liked about this tweet is he put a time horizon on the bottom. So the time horizon is on his call options, not his Ethereum position. His Ethereum position, he'll carry forward, okay, for the long term. He's like Michael Saylor. He's a very macro vision. He's not one to jump in, jump out and sell. But for the, for the short term, he's got a macro vision. But his time horizon there, six to nine months, is for his call options, for his leveraged element of that trade. For me personally, like I said to you, I'd want to be significantly out of my Ethereum position. I would like, I'd, I'd like to be out by March. March is what's the Q1 period next year. I know we said Q4, roll back to January. Uh, sorry, roll back to June this year. I was saying Q4, but of course, it's moved. You know, we're looking at the things that have moved now. Uh, everything's kind of moved to the right slightly. By March, I do think we'll be seeing a topping pattern. However, there's still signs now that say to me, you know, once the dog coins come out and start making more money than everybody else, you know, once the NFTs, you know, you're getting these, these little things do are one of the signals to the top. The other ones, the Pi cycle, the, the Pi cycle top, the 200 day EMA, you know, they're not flashing sell yet, but the mania even though we're not seeing the mass markets coming into it i.e the um the huge mass markets coming into it from the google searches and things like that we are seeing a bit of mania with when it comes to the nfts when it comes to you call of your meme coins are we going to see potentially a crash in those areas maybe that's what we see maybe we see just an nft correction which i think is long overdue maybe the meme coins get hammered hard I don't know it's just, again, it's those, those senses of mine are starting to think, oh, you know, and then you get things like, <clears throat> like today, you know, you get old squid coin, 31,000%. Yeah, the past seven days. So <clears throat> squid game coin, literally ridiculous, you know, and that's gone on there. On you know, it's available on Coinbase. So a major exchange, and it did 31,000%. So, and one of the things is, you know, you, why this is quite funny is because you look on the most, in fact, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll come off that. Let's open up a web, let's share a web screen with you. You, you look on, right, let me get a web page. Where's my web page? Right. So I'll just set up this stuff. Right. Right. Um, da, da, da. You get, let me just quickly flip on here. If you look on, so 
So for the past couple of days, when you go, when you click search on CoinGecko, these are the trending coins. Okay. So these are what are currently trending. And you look at the trending coins on here, Doge NFT, Baby Doge, Shiba, Come Rocket. You know, all of a sudden we've got UFO. I don't know whether UFO, but you know what I mean? You're, you're starting to see the, the trending coins because, and obviously when a, when a coin starts to trend on here, when a coin starts to trend on coin gecko, it generally will pump hard. This is something, you know, again, when you're looking at your research, have a little look on, on coin gecko and see what's trending and see if it's pumped because that's that they gain natural traction. But, you know, you can't argue, you know, again, I'll, I'll come back to Shiba. Well done. Those of you who put it, if you put money in it, not for me, for me, that's gambling. It's not an educated ad, and I'll happily stay away, and I'll happily applaud those who've made money. What is happening now with Shiba is exactly what I said would happen with Doge, with good old Elon, um, is they have started as a meme coin. So I said this about Dogecoin when Elon Musk first pumped Doge. And what I said was, do you know what? It's got zero utility. There's nothing about that 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 has a place in, in the crypto world. But you've got somebody like Elon Musk pumps the coin called, called Doge. So again, roll back to when this first started, pumps the coin called Doge. All of a sudden, it rockets. Now, we're not bothered about what it rockets to in price, but by it rocketing, it gains traction, it gains momentum, it gets people invested in it, even a small amount, but it gets, its eye, it gets eyes on it. It gets everybody looking at it. And even if they've invested... 10 pound, 20 pound, they're invested in it. And all of a sudden it's got, it's got a lot of people in it. It's got a huge community then following it. And all of a sudden, if you drop on top of that, okay, drop on top of that, what was worth this coin, a utility, all of a sudden you've got a massive following immediately seeing your utility rather than something like, I don't know, something like Cardano, when Cardano, where Cardano built themselves a huge, fantastic utility and then had to gain the traction of people looking at that and researching the utility to get people involved. And it took time to build that following to get people involved. And hence why it's a slower, so the coins are slower rises because then they have a utility and then they get the interest rather than the other way with the old Elon saga with Doge. And Shiba, to be honest, because he started Shiba, where you just get this mass following, then all of a sudden you add a utility on top of it. It's that classic case of, you know, you're almost faking it till you make it, aren't you? You are, you are selling something that doesn't exist to see if you can sell it. And again, this is a classic sales. People will go, and go out there, they'll sell, classic one being a course, they'll sell, sell it to the masses, okay? Get all of the input in, the, the investment in, then they'll think, oh, right, now I'll drop the actual value on top of that. So that's in essence what's happening to Shiba. So if you look at now, Shiba is actually developing an ecosystem. I don't know whether any of you looked at this, but this is this is relatively new. So um, if you look on Shiba's, and again, don't get me wrong, I will still never invest in this. It's not for me at all. Um, and even after, you know, that's probably why internet's been the slowest internet in the world at the minute. It's just, it's just not for me. And I do see it. That's going to work. But go have a little look. They are building now an ecosystem on the back of it. Oh, on the back of, uh, on the back of that. So where are we? Back to trending coins. Um, hold on, hold. Climber die Dow is uh, is trending there, which is quite interesting. So, oh, it's dropped quite a lot actually. Wow. There you are, seeing massively volatile the DAOs. That's a significant drop, actually. Okay, for, for climate. But if we look at climate down, oh, that's not the API. So, and, and you know, as we've well, jumped straight to the DAOs here. We spoke about DAOs earlier on building a community that will do something. So, the, for instance, this one here, climate down. I don't know what the APY on this is. I think it's about 30 or thousand percent at the minute. Okay. But, you know, again, go and look at it. It's the community. So, again, you are, you're, you're forming a community, which is it's carbon-backed digital currency. So it's about carbon credits. So they've come with an idea, 
okay, to build a community around that thing. So people are investing almost in it for that thing. Flamingo DAO, like I said, was NFTs. Uh, they built a community around it. The race, you know, that at the time was just shy of 8,000 ETH. And the idea being that this community was building, uh, was buying NFTs. Flamingo was apparently the first DAO, but they are volatile. But if you understand what they are, they're communities which are there to, to try and do something in a certain sector, but they carry huge, uh, huge returns at the moment. Look at them with caution, invest in them with caution. As I say, the one I'm in at the moment is, is Olympus. We'll, we'll, we'll jump on that in a second. I'll show you a little bit about that. Um, I'm sure I was going to show you something on CoinGecko. I can't remember. I can't remember. This was the, the Squid Coin. Okay. It was in the press today. Yeah, Squid Game cri cryptocurrency rockets. What's quite interesting about that is you can't sell it. You can buy it, but you can't sell it. And it's not that you can't sell it, it's because people didn't read actually what this coin is. So people, again, buy into the hype. See what I'm saying about hype and why hype starts to worry me? Um, jumped on board, bought it, did 30 odd thousand percent this week. You can't sell it. The only place you can sell Squid Coin, anybody who has the guess? inside the squid game game which is then being released so all of a sudden you've just invested and people will drop have dropped five figures six figures into this okay so it did st it still did i think it's 300 today so after this went out this morning yeah um in the bbc news and it went on other websites as well it then did a further i think it did 300 percent today uh this coin but you can't spend so people would have looked at this be like me, I'm getting on, coin, on Coinbase now and I'm just going to throw 10 grand into it. Boom, there's my 10 grand into it. You then can't sell it back to fiat or Bitcoin or Ethereum or anything because the only place you can sell it is playing the game. It's a pay per play. So all of a sudden you've just gone on there, you've dropped 100 grand in it, thinking I'll get out when that's 200 grand, go for a quick 100% return. Oh shit. I've just leveraged myself because I borrowed that 100 grand, but I now can't sell it. So I'm going to have to go and play the Squid Game. So you can see how this mania in the, the space kind of starts to worry me a wee bit. Um, yeah, I wanted to pull that one up. What else have we got? What else have we got on here? What else have we got? What else were people asking? Credo, yeah, took a bit of a hit. Um, that's not the end. That's not today's price. If you're not in it and you want to get in it, it's not actually a bad price at the minute. Down to two something, isn't it? Three ten. It's, it's gone up a wee bit. Rich, Rich, where can you um, where can you buy that one? I was trying to find Credit. Credit. Credo, yeah. Is it right. on Binance? Hey, on Binance, you know. No, 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 no. Right, it is. So, if ever you want to know where to buy things, okay. So again, lesson con gecko. Um, come scroll down to the bottom of the page. I don't know why my internet is not really playing ball right now. But it's not loading anything up on that page. Let me just refresh that again. There we go. Slow, slow, slow. There you are. It'll tell you where you can buy it. Okay. Now, a lot of people will think, oh, well, it's it's Bitfinex or it's Gate.io, random, random small exchanges. Okay. The easiest way to buy this is directly then through your MetaMask. So I'm going to open up... Um, I was going to talk about MetaMask in a minute, but I might as well pull it up now. So those of you who use a Mac, okay, you can use MetaMask if you use Firefox browser. Those of you who use a PC, it just, it will go on any of them because MetaMask is a, um, a plugin, okay? And you'll see the little fox up there. So how you do it, simply go to MetaMask. I haven't got it open, but simply go to MetaMask. Um, if you're on a Mac, do it on Firefox. If you're on a PC, it's not uh, important, but you can't do it on Safari, which is what a lot of people make that mistake. So go there, open up MetaMask um, as a website. Here you are, download it, and then all of a sudden you'll see it as a, as a plugin up here. When you are um, logging into it, it's a, if it's the first time you've done it, it will give you your recovery phrase, which is words, they are your keys, okay? So those keys, 
So Meta, a lot of people say MetaMask isn't, isn't secure. It's secure to a level. It's secure as long as those keys are never recovered. Now, if I had one of your lots of keys, if you gave me your keys, I, was, I think it's 12 words for MetaMask, it might be 18. If you give me your 18 words, I could go on here, click on that, enter your 18 words, and I would then be in your wallet. That is how you hack a hot wallet, an online wallet. They are secure to, you know, to a level. Yeah, and that's what you've got to be conscious of. But you can connect a ledger to, or, or a Trezor, to a MetaMask wallet uh, when you set it up. Now, it's not going to allow me to do it because I've already set this up. But to do that, if I just open this up, it would be up the top here. Okay? So, uh, and that would become your Trezor address. That address here is always for your MetaMask wallet, not per coin not per token, that is the address for this wallet, okay? Unlike, say, Binance, where you will have an Ethereum address or you will have a, a Bitcoin address or you'll have various addresses per coin, MetaMask, you have a single address. But it's your responsibility to ensure that you have the token in the wallet. I'll talk about that in a second. So I can connect a hard wallet to this, okay? Um, as I said, this one's not on a cold wallet, sorry. Um, it's simply on the hot wallet. So I just wanted to give you this little thing here. So when you when you log into MetaMask, first off, you will be on the Ethereum mainnet. You can add the Binance chain as well. So to add the Binance chain, this is something I want to, to go through. You would come down here and you would just add a custom chain, okay? It will then give you this page here. Yeah. From that, you'd, you would go to So this is on the Binance Academy. By all means, screenshot that if you want to do it. And you simply put in these details. OK, so I want to add smart chain copy. That. Right. So if I just move that over there, do that. Move that there, like that. And you've just got to add these in. Okay, so we'll do it for, for you now. Network name is... If I add this in... I'm going to say that's not going to be... So what to do. UID is 56. Optional, optional, optional. If I save that, that's it. That's it. So now I am on the Binance Smart Chain. Okay. So as you can see here, I have nothing in it. I know it says Ethereum. Okay. But just this is now we are in Binance Smart Chain. So what this means is I can send. BNB, so Binance chain here. I can send wrapped Ethereum, wrapped Bitcoin. I'll not get into the wrapping of it, that because that's again that's something I think I'm going to get Zayn to do a bit of a lesson on that. He's a bit more uh, in depth on that. But you can send Ethereum, Bitcoin. Why do you want to do this? Because you pay pennies to do this. So why is this important? It will naturally default to the Ethereum chain. Okay. So let's say I have. Um, and I want to buy something within this. So what, what, what I was thinking about buying was Credo. That was the question, wasn't it? So what we do is buy Credo. You want to see if it's on. Instead of those random exchanges, um, there's Credo price. Instead of opening up an account on one of these random exchanges, what I want to do is I want to see if it's on, if it can be done through MetaMask. So I come up here, and this is very important. So if you are ever looking for a coin, you must use the contract address. See, it's got the... The, the little wolf, the little fox face next to it. Okay, that's for a reason. So it's on MetaMask as well. Don't just go onto MetaMask, okay, and search for uh, assets. Oh, look, look, it doesn't come up. Yeah. 
Does it come up in there? No, so it doesn't come up like that. But if I go on here, read here, copy the contract address, which you've probably heard that term a few times. Come back onto here. I want to import tokens. Try not to go like that. Put it down as a custom token. Like that. Da -da, there it is there. So I now add custom token. And that's it. So that's now in my wallet. So what does that mean to me? That basically means, and look, you should see it down here now. There's credo. So this is why it's very important. So, you know, I said the other day about uh, 100 Ethereum got lost. 100 Ethereum was sent to a MetaMask wallet without the asset being added to the wallet. So let's say I didn't have credo there and I went onto my Binance or my Kraken and I thought, I want to buy something through MetaMask. Oh, they've got credo there. I want to send Ethereum direct to credo. I want to send Ethereum direct to something like that. And you haven't got it added as an asset. It will be burnt. Yeah, that's it then gone. You've sent it to the wrong uh, an address without the contract. So now here, I can now buy credo directly within my MetaMask without having to open up any of these random accounts. Yeah. So with that, how you would do it, you would simply send Ethereum here. So I would, Ethereum, um, I would look to uh, copy the address, go into my exchange, Binance Kraken, send Ethereum to that address. Ethereum would turn up here. Always remember you need a little bit of extra Ethereum for gas fees. I would then go on to uh, swap. I would say I want to swap. 100 Ethereum for Credo pops up at the top because it's now one of my added coins. Yeah. And then you would review the swap in and it will tell you how much it's going to rape your full gas fees. In fact, it'll tell me that now. I can do that. So it'll tell you. So you go through that. There it is there. So it's saying I can transfer 100 Ethereum into Credo. Okay. It's going to cost me, holy moly, it's going to cost me $482 in gas. Okay. To do that transaction. Okay, so I might think, ah, oh, I wonder if this is on the Binance chain. So let's do the process again. This is why I always say to people, conscious, planned decision making whenever you're doing this. Come back here, right, copy it again, come back in here. What I'm doing is I want to see if it's on the Binance chain. It might, it might not be. I actually don't know. I want to change my chain to the smart chain. I'm now in the smart chain. I almost talk to myself sometimes. I want to import a token, custom token. Let's see if Credo is there. Credo is not there. Okay, so which means you can't buy Credo on the smart chain. Can you buy Olympus on the smart chain? Just to give you um, an example. Um, No, what's on the smart chain? What can I buy in the smart? I'm surprised you can't buy Olympus in the smart chain. Um, what can I buy in the smart chain? Just to give you an example. You can buy squid. Can you? Eight. Yeah. Smart chain, import tokens. Uh, I'm going to contract it. Let's see. Get a contract address for something I'll show you. Sorry. Ba -ba uh, I'll tell you what I was going to buy today. I was going to buy some Veracity, VRA. Obviously, uh, import tokens, contract address. VRA, there it is. Okay. So let's say I want to swap some. Now I'm on the Binance chain. I want to swap. Now that is a, right, so go back to that. That quite often is a, um, there's a few of these where, 
it says ETH there, but it is actually BNB. And when you look at the address, it would be BNB always. So when I go swap, it says BNB. So with this, remember, don't send Ethereum to the smart chain. If you're doing this, guys, then um, I'm more than happy to walk people through, but it, it, it individually will depend on your specific cost. But if you're using the Binance chain, send BNB there and not ETH. So if I have BNB in my wallet, I now want to transfer 100 BNB for, um, for Rusty. Okay. Review swap. No quotes available. Typical. What can we do? What can we do? Let's do a dodge. You'll see what I'm all I'm trying to show you is the diff. Oh, typical. That sometimes happens. And that might just simply be because I've got nothing in that wallet. There you are. The point being, this is what I'm getting at here. You see on the Binance chain how much it costs you to swap zero there. Yeah. So if and the more things will start coming on the smart chain, more things will start going on the Matic network. You can add Matic network and the polygon network in exactly the same way as i've just added the smart chain but it defaults and most people will default to the ethereum chain because that's what metamask defaults to but you've got to check to see if it's on another chain so what i'm getting at there is i would always check to see if it's on another chain if it is on another chain and you've got the capacity to do it then do it on the other chain if it's not on the other chain you've just got to suck up those gas, gas fees and there's bugger all you can do about it um, so that's how you buy credo. So that's your answer there. And the credo will sit in your MetaMask wallet until you send it to your ledger or your Trezor. I was always a ledger fan over a Trezor, but ledgers at the minute are not keeping up with the, the software. And it's, it, again, you can go and read forums and you can read Reddit threads on it that ledgers do have a lot of problems now connecting to MetaMask wallets. And I dare bet that's what your problem was, Mike, it was actually your ledger, not your, um, not that you were doing it wrong was your ledger. And a lot of people now are moving to Trezor. I haven't yet, but I'm certainly considering that I might have to suck it up and buy another cold wallet if, uh, because I now have a lot on MetaMask or use MetaMask for a lot of trades. Okay. So that's kind of MetaMask. That's kind of how you would swap coins in here. Um, anything that you can't see. So again, what, you know, um, and again, let's talk Olympus down. Okay. So that's what we were going to talk. So again, very, very briefly, um, there it is there. Olympus OHM is the coin. Okay. Scrolling down, scrolling down. You can see it's available on SushiSwap or Uniswap. Again, easiest way to do it. Contract address. Yeah, copy your contract address. And again, with any of these, all of using uh, CoinGecko for your, um, so Credo, for instance, I just want to go quickly back to Credo. So a lot of people jump on Credo just because I said it. I wonder how many people actually, one of the biggest things with Credo that I like, so when you're talking about doing your research, is the people behind the team. So lo and behold, it's got the LinkedIn here. So literally go to the LinkedIn and look at who's involved in these projects, okay? And this is what got me looking at this, is, is the team behind it. So it'll obviously take you to the Credo LinkedIn page, look at the people involved in it to see who've listed Credo on their, um, on their job spec and start looking for, right, managing partner, yeah, marketing, financial client, you know, and you can look down, there you are, chief exec, Anthony Foy. So you're looking, and you're reading, so it came from Binance, you know, when you're reading about it, you know, you look at his history and what he's done in the blockchain space. And that makes it quite interesting. Then read the rest of the board. So you can see how it's about building up that picture rather than doing what 90% of people do when they want to buy a coin these days, is go to YouTube, type in Credo and see what somebody else has said about it. Okay, do your own little bit of research on it. Um, right, Olympus, that's what I wanted to show you. So 
Olympus, again, done through MetaMask, ensure you've got enough Ethereum to pay your gas fees on it. Here's OHM, and it's again exactly as I've just shown. It is only available on the Binance, uh, on the ETH side, not the Binance side. And as I said, this isn't me. This is me showing you more the utility of MetaMask is what I wanted to show you rather than how to buy Olympus. But Olympus is the only DAO that I'm currently invested in. Ethereum, transfer it to Olympus. Okay, you will then pay your astronomical gas fees. I don't know, let's transfer that. Let's see what it comes up with a gas fee now. It was $400 before, wasn't it? $400, madness. Okay, middle of the night is best for, for that uh, transfer. But let's go on to Olympus. Okay, and this calls for any of the... Um, any of the sites which have Connect Wallet, okay, if you're using a Mac, again, you can do it on Fire, on, um, on Firefox. If you're on a, on a PC, it's, it's less relevant. So this is the Olympus DAO site, and it says Connect Wallet. So when it says things like that, if you just hit Connect Wallet, a lot of them, uh, I looked at one today, and it only allowed an Orion wallet to be connected. Some of them will be other random wallets. You've got to make a decision. And again, this is why... You've got to make that decision. This is what I say to people. There is absolutely nothing wrong with just sticking to your mainstream Binance Kraken. Good friend of mine, I said, the friend of mine, he will not buy anything off Binance or Kraken. Not because he doesn't want to. I've got, there's a guy I once met who said he won't buy anything off Coinbase because he wants the security that Coinbase provided him, which was the most ridiculous thing ever. Rich Maltby, friend of mine, he says he won't buy anything off Binance or Kraken. And it's simply because he hasn't got the mental capacity to keep track of where things are. So he's honest with himself and he's just said, if it's on Binance and Kraken, I'll fill my boots. If it's anywhere else using any other wallet, I don't want to. You've got to make that decision yourself. The worst thing is you look at how many Bitcoin are lost. You look at how many random other coins are lost. That bloke I said earlier on who put $8,000 into Shiba, chances are he's lost his keys. If you lose your keys for MetaMask, you know, you're better off sticking with the safe investments, which will still do phenomenally well in this bull run on exchanges that you're not going to get yourself locked out of. Okay, you're better off sticking with that rather than trying to think, oh, I want to chase that 20x gain that somebody said, but you can only buy it on MetaMask. And then you've got to stake it on here. And to get that APY, you've then got to link that wallet to this wallet and that wallet. If you're not comfortable with that, you're better off forgetting it, accepting, applauding the people who make the gains over there, okay? And just sticking with your crypto portfolio on the mainstream exchanges. So always bear that in mind because that's why there's so many coins which are lost because people lose the bloody keys. The keys being those 12 words that I told you when you start a MetaMask, they'll give you. The amount of people who have already lost them is, you know, astronomical. Anyway, Connect Wallet, you would hit Connect Wallet and the system will then just connect it for you. Simple as that. Okay. Um, and this, this year, 8,000% APY, you know, I currently hold, you know, I bought 82 of them um, a week, uh, yeah, a week ago. Yeah, a week ago, and the it's made me six ohm. So instead of thinking financial, I'm like, it's made me six ohm. If I want to know what that's made, you would come to somewhere like that. You would say, how much is that now worth? And you would you would look at, and you use it for this. You six ohm, so it's made me what seven thousand dollars in the in the week. The price is far more volatile. So if that price halved, I still make my six own. Okay, so you've got to be comfortable with what you're doing that for. Yeah, you look at climate. Uh, what was it? Dropped thirty five percent. That's you know that rich. You can realise that profit if you wanted to. Yeah, you can realise it straight away, and I do. I am real. I'm going to real. So I'm running. I'm going to realise that until my initial investment is out. Is my plan, which is ten weeks. So it's not locked in. It's literally. It's 10 weeks. It doubles every 10 weeks. Yeah. Um, and then I'll let it run. I'll let it run. I might, I might change that plan, but that's my initial plan. Okay. But again, these are volatile. The idea behind Olympus is it will provide stability. Now, when it's got stability, the APY will significantly drop. The, the vision behind this is phenomenal. 
okay but there's a lot of hurdles along the way that it has to overcome i think on a lost olympus there it is there so that all i'm getting at there is that is how you are utilizing metamask wallet to connect to a site and as you see those ohm aren't in my metamask anymore because i've staked them on that platform very hex like she would say you know we went through hex staking it on their platform tying it up in their platform the difference here is you can unstake immediately you're not tied in for a period of time so i could immediately think right do you know what i want to liquidate that and again i will personally again personal choice be out of this way before i consider the end of the bull market because i do see these as the, the smaller caps getting smashed far harder than your bitcoins your ethereum so you can unstake at any time simply by pressing that obviously disconnect your wallet to allow a little bit of security on that so that's the use of metamask and um, and like i do want to caveat that if you are not make spend some time you know do that always send always use some caveats right so that 100 ETH was that that i put up on facebook the other day was a very very experienced uh, crypto investor foolish mistake stupid mistake okay conscious planned decision making okay is what you always have to do with crypto copy the contract address go to metamask insert the contract address send from binance or kraken or your main exchange a very small portion of eth yes it's going to have your pants down and it's going to literally you know rinse you for ethereum gas fees but trust me you are better off sending fifty dollars of ethereum and paying two hundred dollars for the privilege to at least see that fifty dollars arrive rather than thinking i'm a cheap state i'm going to send ten thousand dollars of ethereum just so i only pay the uh, the gas fee once and actually get something wrong and then it disappear forever okay so you're better off doing that so always send that small test sum first make sure it arrives yes you are going to be screwed for gas fees that's unfortunately nothing will do about that get up in the middle of the night and you'll save yourself a small fortune on gas um because it is significantly less than but that's just one of those things unfortunately um so planned planned decision making when it comes to crypto i'm seeing too many people lose silly silly money um squid game squid i told you about uh that was a bit kind of want to look on that tesla what can you say Tesla, interesting, interesting one. So, um, my two favorite people in, in the investing world, Raul Powell, Kathy Wood. Um, and, you know, Kathy Wood called $4,000 um, Tesla three years ago, two years ago, maybe. And everyone called her an absolute mad woman. And lo and behold, what have we had with Tesla since then? We've had a five to one stock split. So actually her $4,000 um, prediction within five years actually was on the light side because we'd actually be at $5,000 right now. Does everybody understand that? Because obviously we've had a five to one stock split. So Tesla now would be 5,500 if they hadn't done that stock split. She called within five years, Tesla at $4,000. And lo and behold, we're there. But it's one of those things that I, you know, I've always said that on traditional metrics, this is so, so overvalued. But I feel like the metaverse, like those sort of things, when we're moving away from traditional metrics, you know, and that's why I spent so long a few weeks ago talking about the, you know, the, the, the sectors that she's so bullish on now. And that's kind of where I'm following. I'm kind of spending a lot of time following her calls, should we say. Um, now I'm less invested in the stock market now, but certainly when I start going back into the stock market, with all my children's ices, um, which you can't touch. When I start going back heavily into the stock market again, into that bear cycle, I'll be following a lot of her innovative um, ETF calls because you can't invest in her ETFs, but I'll be following her positions. Metamask, da, 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 right. What last one? Where are we? Right, yeah. What we're doing at the minute with 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 crypt, with with the with coins as such. What was going on here? This chart. God knows. No, no idea. Right, where are we at the moment? Right. 
Let's just change that. Bitcoin broke out earlier on today. I was just going to show you a little thing on here. Right. Touched its all-time high, okay, which we all know. Obviously, everybody in there, uh, everybody at that time became a, an expert in. Um, the trend line's probably around there, okay, for Bitcoin. Okay, now if we copy that line, we almost call it a bit of a channel, which is there. So what do we expect to see here? Now, as I say, I'm starting to think, uh, you know, 70, we're, we're trickling up here. We're not seeing huge volume, but we have broken out here. Now, realistically, what's going to happen with this? Now, why do I always focus on, you know, I, again, very open the fact that I currently own no Bitcoin. Um, I'm very heavy in the theory, but I own no Bitcoin, but the, the world follows Bitcoin. So we've got a breakout here, positive breakout, really good, solid breakout of this trend line. And then traditionally what you will look to see is you look to see a retest of that. So this market will retest back down to this line. So I do expect it to kind of come back down to what the 61-ish mark, just over 62 there. Now, if it breaks back into the channel here, chances are you will see it come down to the, to the 50s again. So that is one scenario. One scenario that, that, that the market may well play out. The other scenario is that we retest this and then we do, the, the market does rally up higher. So this is quite a significant period. We're at the end of the month. As you know, we're at the end of October now. We've got the futures contract expiring. So there's a lot of these factors. Again, all the stars align into kind of one period, end of the month. So it's quite a significant time with Bitcoin at the moment. If we look at Ethereum, we saw Ethereum just earlier on today. Yet again, Gray, I want to do on the Coinbase when we do. Uh, we always saw Ethereum break its all-time high earlier on today, and lo and behold, it's it's coming back down to to retest it. Now here will be quite an interesting one. So traditionally, you know, very very similar sort of theory that I've just said there. The market will. Support resistance. We've spoke about this a number of times. So if you look at the market here, the market came up here, it kissed this line here, okay, and then it rejected from it. It's hovered around below it and then it's gone up, it's kissed it, it's rejected it, then it's done a positive breakthrough the, um, at that point, the support. The key here now is for Ethereum to turn that support, uh, sorry, that resistance into a support. So as you can see now, this red candle over the past four hours has come down to touch it. If, okay, if we see it break down again like that, we may well see a rejection probably down to this kind of level. Do I see that happening? I don't. I actually see now this, this is the time for Ethereum. I think we will bounce off that and we'll very, very quickly see a 4,000 level is where I, uh, where I see it go. Uh, a, uh, certainly a 4.6, 4.7, and then potentially shooting up to that 5,000 Ethereum. For me, the play is still is still the ETH BTC play. Okay, like you can see here, let's go down to the one hour. It's still the ETH Bitcoin play. Okay. Previous high there, 0.72. I see this being 0.8-ish realistically, relatively soon. Okay, so the 0.8 is up there, the previous high is up there. So why do I think that? Again, we look at this, we probably got a trend line up there. Positive break through the trend line, came back to test the trend line, and it's starting to rally up higher now. Okay, what I'd like to see now is Ethereum to take off, Bitcoin just hover still um, where it is and actually get that ratio a little bit higher because that's the, the what I'm playing is the, the, the Bitcoin Ethereum ratio. Hopefully you've all seen why I'm doing that because actually if you look at the bigger picture, okay, 
bigger picture here. Back end of um, December. Yeah, back in December in 2017 was the Bitcoin high. Then we rallied hard for Ethereum. Okay. Now, if we see a significant rally hard for Ethereum and Bitcoin standing still, if you look back at that cycle, it's kind of like, well, actually, is this now into full blown alt season, which means is the momentum going to carry Bitcoin higher than the 70,000? Now you sort of, hopefully, you're starting to see my mind picture of where I mold together. I'd like to, I'd, there's part of me that still says, yeah, 100% we'll see 100,000. There's part of me that says, that's what everybody expects. And the market has a tendency to do the opposite. So we'll see, we'll see. I'd like to see that rally to about point one. Yeah, which for me, you know, at this moment in time is, uh, well, what, your $62,000 Bitcoin, that's a $60,000. $6,200 Ethereum. That's where I'd like to see us getting to in the short term. That was kind of all I really wanted to talk about this evening. A few issues in the chat. Um, it's an interesting time. What am I looking at now? Right, I spoke about VRA early on, Veracity, Gaming Coin, Credo, good entry on Credo at the moment. Olympus, I've added to that. Veracity and Phantom, they're old gaming coins. They're good ones at the moment, but I think they're going to start coming into their own a little bit more now. Phantom and um, Veracity. Um, also, you, you, you know, so I've, I've opened up, um, I haven't opened up a small position in them, but I plan to hold those. And why I'm starting to do that is I think gaming coins will have a, a completely different run potentially now with this metaverse opening up than the standard crypto market and again that's just me reading a little bit into what um raul pal said allocate your portfolio correctly don't go all in on the small caps don't get blinded by the seven figure fuckwits on youtube who throw figures around you know concentrate on what you want to do and your own goals plan your exit um, and all will be good don't think it will never end um Duh, duh, duh. Yeah, climber has gone down. Yeah, climber has dropped. Polygon, yes, you can add on MetaMask as well in very similar way that I've just added the smart chain. Trezor, yeah, people are saying less clunky than um, than um, than ledgers. Yeah, they are. And never mix with alcohol. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Steve, unfortunately, this is the best suntan that a, a ginger-haired person gets, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, sorry, I missed you, Steve, for your visit up here, mate, all just a bit too much. Um, how, how did you find the visit? It was fantastic, actually. Yeah, we were there about four hours. Yeah. Fantastic. Yes, yeah, so we're, we're just getting some quotations in and, um, yeah, we can see if we can take it forwards. Yeah, it's a, it's a great old system. It's a great old system. Steve came up to visit Ihelios in Hull to have a look at the, the, the flats. Did you get a look around the, the, the eco flats that he's built? Yeah, we did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm keen to see, is it, is it cost effective to, to link it up to solar panels as well? And yeah. just looking at alternatives then on how we're going to heat the hot water. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. We want to look at how eco-friendly can we make the next HMO that's going on site. So it's good. 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 Um, fantastic. Guys, I'm going to write the report this weekend. The next one, it's going to be heavy. I'm just going to write heavy crypto, to be honest, because that's all, all anybody wants to hear about these days. Um, so we'll write heavy crypto. Don't neglect your standard investments, your stocks, shares, investments, looking at that world. Don't neglect looking at the big picture of the world, should we say, and what's going on. Um, Obviously, we had the budget this week. Actually, it was fairly decent, if I'm honest. What, what did I take from the budget? The only one really that will affect me heavily is dividend tax is going up as of 2022. Um, that's the major one for myself. Interest rates, everyone's screaming for them to go up. I will happily lay a bet now with you all. We will not see an interest rate rise at the next round from the Bank of England. And I don't think we will for a fair while yet. Um, 
people are calling for it to, to curb inflation. I think when, once I think the Bank of England will sit on their hands for the time being because they realise that a raise of only 0.25% interest rates will literally break the middle classes who are leveraged up to the yin yang on their residential mortgages and their two cars that they've got leased on the driveway and everything else. That is a, a very open statistic that a 0.25% rise will actually cause significant economic damage. I think they will sit on their hands hoping that when the supply chain issues that we're seeing calm down, actually inflation calms down with it. Let's see. Let's see. But I dare bet I'd be, if I was a betting man, that's exactly what I think the Bank of England will do. So actually not a bad budget at all. Um, so don't neglect that. Um, that's what it. Happy Friday, people. Sorry, it's a Friday. We'll be back to normal Wednesday. I'll have the report out next week. Um, any questions? You know where I am. Um, just a quick one, Rich, uh, with regards to MetaMask. Yes. Um, just just to, from a security perspective, uh, just to, to make sure that you lock it when, you, when you're coming away from it. Yes. And, and, and also look at the sites that it's connected to and maybe unconnect them, just to, from a security point of view. Yeah, uh, or, or just get everything off MetaMask. But yes, yeah, yeah, lock, yeah. Lock, I should have said. Lock, it's effectively like logging out. Yeah, and, and there, is a time, there is a timer on it. You can do a two-minute, four-minute, whatever. So it'll always, always log out. Yeah. Thank you, Howard. Um, right, guys, have a good evening. Um, I will have a good Halloween. Yeah, I hope you're all out uh, check our street tomorrow. Obviously, George's favourite holiday, so he will be all over it tomorrow. Amy's hosting a party for them. I have no idea what goes on in this house sometimes. Um, so have yourselves a good weekend, everyone. We'll speak to you all soon. Take it easy, guys. Thanks, Rich. Yeah, thanks, Rich. Yeah.